Good day, everybody. Everything new under the sun. The timeline of the return of the Lord includes, I believe, uh, prior to the seven-year period spoken of uh, in, in the Bible um, by uh, Daniel. It, it includes the uh, War of Gog, Magog, Ezekiel 38, and Isaiah 17, the destruction of Damascus, and uh, even before that, uh, maybe the Psalm 83 war, which is a war that Israel has with an inner circle of nations and then an outer circle of nations. And uh, in wartime, of course, what you do is you're the, the people you deal with first are the people that are closest to you, right? So Israel right now is dealing with Gaza, the people closest to it, because they don't want to, uh, for example, go after Iran uh, and, and simply be going after Iran. And then um, Hamas comes after Israel uh, on their doorstep, right? So they go after this inner circle. They clean house with this inner circle. Uh, and then they go to the outer circle of uh, nations and uh, and destroy them. Well, the inner circle includes Hamas right now, and uh, it's almost uh, uh, you know addressed. It's almost done, and they are looking towards Hezbollah. Now, this was a this is actually a J Post article. Uh, Reuters denies reporting that Israel will attack Lebanon. Reuters denied on Saturday that it had uh, reported. This is yesterday that Israel would attack Lebanon within 48 hours after reports circulated on social media citing news agencies saying uh, saying this. And he claims that Reuters reported that Israel will attack Lebanon in the next uh, 48 hours is false. Reuters did not report this, it says. Now, when you see these things, take them as a clue. Now, it could be totally bogus, but it also could be some actual truth getting out uh, when they didn't want it to. Someone in the know... Um, said something, and a news agency or or a reporter went with it. And oops, we weren't supposed to say that or give that indication. Um, But there, you know, uh, could there be truth there behind that? Are there plans in way? Uh, Could very well be. So this is jpost.com reporting, again, that jpost said this. Again, it's a propaganda war. It's a narrative war. The government and the military is playing with its citizens. But not only that, even even more specifically, um, the people of the world. Of course, the people of the world are going to be reading J-Post. And, uh, you know, if Russia, Iran, China, whomever uh, sees this, uh, they're going to see this and say, oh, okay, you know, coming from uh, uh, Israel's government and, and media, um, this, this story was false. And so they're, they're trying to uh, persuade public opinion and, and move it in a certain direction as well, simply by the media and the stories and the rumors that they're putting out there, right, as it relates to the timing of things. So could there be some truth released here? Um, this is allisrael.com. Joel Rosenberg tells Janet Parshall, we are facing an apocalyptic war and God is shaking Israel. Uh, and uh, it says, uh, Parshall asked Rosenberg has Bo's experience with, on October 7th. He described recognizing after eight rounds of rockets toward Jerusalem uh, that something was different. It was so painful, and then you realize throughout the day that this is not a normal round. This is not just rockets. Uh, so he goes on and, and speaks about that. And that's that was really the trigger uh, to all of this, right? That was the excuse, if you will, to start that Psalm 83 war, if that's what it is, against the inner circle of nations. They needed something big um, that they could go to the world with on the world stage and say, look, these people did this, so we're going to clean house and um, take care of business, right? So I think that's what's happening there. This is allisrael.com as well. Over 5,000 projectiles fired at Israel from Lebanon in over eight months. Full out war with Hezbollah seems inevitable. This is June 22nd. So the rhetoric is ticking up, just like the pandemic when um, news of a new virus started ticking up. You started seeing news about it, um, for or against it. Um, some outlets, you know, suggesting that it was fake news or it was conspiracy, whatever. You see news for and against it. And if a big wave of news for or against something is happening at, at a specific point in time over a short period of time, there's something, there's a, there's a battle going on in the, in the airways uh, within the media groups. Um, and they're trying to cover up something or change the story, change the narrative on something, right? So again, you see this uptick, significant uptick uh, on the, this Hezbollah thing. 80,000 Israelis displaced for their homes. 25 soldiers killed so far. 5,000 rockets and missiles and drones shot at Israel. 20,000 acres burned. Yes, they're burning land. Uh, Hezbollah is. 947 plus houses and infrastructure damaged. So they have, you know, if you look at this compared to 
October 7th, for example, um, I would suggest on you know slightly different grounds um, that uh, Israel potentially has what it needs to convince the world community that uh, yes, it does have it does have standing uh, to go against Hezbollah. This is uh, uh, WorldIsraelNews.com, June 22nd. The U.S. says it will uh, fully support Israel in all-out war with Lebanon. Again, at the same time Reuters is denying they said Israel is going to go into Lebanon, you have the countries coming out and saying, yes, Israel, we will back you. So they know something. They've already spoken in back channels. They've heard things, right? Um, so that's the United States. So here is, um, this is WorldIsraelNews.com. Canada prepares to evacuate. 45,000 citizens from Lebanon amid fears of all-out war. Israel's uh, FM uh, foreign minister responded to, by urging Canada to put pressure on Iran, which backs Hezbollah to de-escalate the conflict. So 45,000 citizens, uh, you know, get out of Lebanon because something is happening quick. Is there any more truth to the writer's supposed headline? Uh, supposedly they put it out there that there is going to be a war in the next 48 hours, which we are into right now, being June 23rd. So that's interesting, right? So what is Netanyahu saying? What is Israel saying? Well, this is uh, jpost.com. Netanyahu, this is uh, June 23rd today. Netanyahu, intense Rafa fighting is almost over. Hezbollah battle is next. So the leader of Israel indeed himself is saying it. Now, he's not saying within 48 hours. But he's saying, and he said this a couple days ago as well, that really, once they, once they take, care, take care of Gaza, and Hamas uh, specifically, not the Gazans or, or the people there, but once they deal with Hamas officially and get them under control, they will uh, address Hezbollah, which has been, again, uh, sending all sorts of weapons and burning land and destroying infrastructure. Any other country... Uh, you know, who had this being done to them uh, would have declared war, right? I mean, you don't allow this to happen to your citizens, to your citizens' land, to your sovereign borders. So Israel's not going to stand by this. Israel's going to do something, and they're going to take care of Hezbollah, right? But it's going to be a bigger war. It's going to be more complicated. It's going to require more money, and it's going to be more technological. Um, certainly, Hezbollah is more sophisticated. They're kind of the next level, if you will. Uh, for Israel uh, to go against Hezbollah with uh, bigger weapons, larger weapons, uh, more uh, order and, uh, you know, management at higher levels and better military sophistication than Hamas was, which was just a bunch of terrorists, basically. Uh, and so here we go. So Hezbollah battle is next. The intense part of the military operation in Rava is almost over, uh, Netanyahu said Sunday night, explaining that the next goal is to bring an end to Hezbollah's attacks along the country's north border. Uh, so the intense phase uh, is about to end, uh, he says, uh, and they will continue mowing the grass in Gaza. We will not give up. We will hit them hard. Uh, it says it marked the first time since the start of the Gaza war uh, that he uh, granted an interview. So now they're taking it to the people. Um, they're telling the people this is a telegraph to the people of Israel and to the people of the world um, that, you know what, we're turning our attention now militarily. They're not going to say what they're going to do, but they're, they're giving hints and, and they're going to turn their attention northward. Um, he says uh, they're open to diplomatic uh, resolution uh, to Hezbollah, but he stressed that it must be on our terms. So he's uh, speaking to the residents of northern Israel. Uh, we will have to enforce it because the residents of the north must be allowed to return home, Netanyahu said, as he referred to scores of thousands of citizens who fled their communities in uh, the north uh, on October 7th and have not been able to return. We are obligated. So again, he's taking his country's sovereignty seriously, and uh, they're going to go into war. He did not provide specifics with uh, regard to the possibility of a third Lebanon war, but said we will do what is necessary. I can assure the citizens of Israel that if we are required to take on this challenge, we will do it. We can fight on several fronts. Now, he again, uh, and he says, we are pre preparing for it specifically. And so they're prepared for it. Um, they're just finishing up what they need to in in uh, the Gaza Strip with Hamas. And uh, and then they will head uh, to um, Hezbollah. And again, where did Reuters, uh, Reuters get their news? Um, was that... Um, some leaked bit of information. When you see the the rhetoric and the the media, the news stories uh, start popping up about citizens being evacuated. This is exactly what happened in the lead up to the Ukraine war. All the same stuff. 
where rumors came out, they were retracted. Then they then countries started pulling their citizens out, and they started talking about you know war and peace and compromise and all this stuff. And uh, all of a sudden, um, Israel moved into Ukraine, and so that's what's going to happen uh, in. Uh, Israel and in Lebanon as well and Israel's going to have to go in there probably occupy some land uh, on foot it's going to be a bigger harder challenge um, than uh, was uh, Gaza going in there so is this an apocalyptic war uh, it is it's a prophetic war it's an uh, it's a war in eschatology uh, that is I believe described in Psalm 83 in Isaiah 17 uh, in Ezekiel 38, and uh, there's bits and pieces, and there's a timeline to each of those prophecies. Um, but Israel's going to deal with the inner circle of nations first before they deal with Iran, so they have to go after uh, Hamas and, and Hezbollah, and they have to address all the power um, and the, the you know even the Russian support in is in Syria and Damascus. Isaiah 17 is of course about the destruction of Damascus, where it seems like a nuclear weapon is used uh, because it's uh, uninhabited. It's a ruinous heap, uh, Damascus, a city that has been a city, um, uh, you know, um, steady for the last 2,000 years, if not longer, uh, will be uninhabited when Israel is done with it. And Israel's going to have to, to prevent all the terrorists in uh, Syria uh, from simply lobbing weapons in. Again, it's a, this inner circle of nations Israel has to deal with right on its border uh, before they can go really after I- Iran and uh, any other nation that would join Iran. So I think we kind of see it happening before our eyes. And they've been dealing with it for, uh, since 1948. And really, um, uh, since since the very beginning, uh, since Israel uh, became a nation, um, and uh, it's all through the Bible about uh, all these neighbors that they have to deal with all the time. So it's prophetic, and uh, could it be happening in the next 40, 48 hours? It probably it probably won't be the next 48 hours, but we hear these things, and I think it gets people's minds ready uh, for what's to come. It, uh, Israel, the Israel citizenry, and also the people of the world, so that when it does happen, they will say, "Oh yeah, I, I, I'm used to that. Uh, this doesn't uh, <clears throat> this doesn't phase me. I heard of that rumor weeks ago, so you no know, no biggie." And then they go on with their whatever they're doing, right? So, pay attention, eyes open. Things are heating up in the Middle East. Thanks for watching. I'll leave it there. We'll see you in the next video.